What's up guys, Shade Tree Surgeon here, back again with Eric from FNA Customs with the moment literally dozens of you have been asking for since we first posted all those uh, videos of Eric's choppers that he's built over the years. Literally like one out of every three comments was, when the fuck are you gonna fire up that two-stroke chopper? Well, today's the day. So this thing is originally built off of a Kawasaki H2 which uh, this is the kind of thing that makes purists cry and all those who say nothing is sacred jump for joy. And I'm definitely in the nothing is sacred camp. <laughs> so I love seeing an original super sport, the original Widowmaker, the craziest bike ever to come out of the 70s, the 750cc two-stroke Kawasaki H2 made into a fucking hell on wheels chopper. But what year, what year is the it's engine? 72. Uh, started out 72. Engine really early numbers there. 00149, so one of the first productions. But when I got it, I just got the engine and parts and built everything else the whole frame, fender, gas tank, oil bag. It's got a mixed match of wheels and brakes. <laughs> yeah, I was noticing that. Different year tryout. Pumps and brakes. And so this is this is truly a Frankenstein. It is. And, and so there you go. And here's something you can tell all the purists when you don't tell them to get fucked when they're saying, how dare you commit this sacrilege against the original super sport, the Kawasaki H2. This thing was destined for the junk heap anyway. What Eric did is he gave it a whole new fucking life. And I think that's pretty cool. So yeah, it was sitting in the back of a storage unit. And some the guy that owned the storage unit, I fixed a couple front ends for him and he gave me the trade of the engine for the work there you go man it would it would have just sat and rusted away into nothing if it wasn't for that so one thing i was noticing when i was walking around it before is you said this has got all sorts of different stuff on it but this rear wheel with the chain and the drum on it all is one piece which if you see here since it's a manually actuated drum we go from here this rod all the way through here through the frame <laughs> and then over to here to manually actuate that. That's a lot of work for an absolutely perfectly clean finish, which is well, this, what I dig about the stuff you do is that you put an ass ton of work into making sure something looks like it isn't there at all. Yeah, this is a, this is a six inch or seven inch uh, front brake plate right here. And then this is a, a totally different year Triumph uh, rear hub that was aluminum conical and then this is a Harley Sportster rim so, and then the same thing in the front same same 18 inch rim with a, con a conical hub with the dual leading shoe which they never usually the dual leading shoe brake plate has a kind of a shitty steel drum but I wanted to put them with the aluminum conical because they look a lot better. Well, it might be a hardtail chopper, but it still hauls ass, so it needs to be able to stop, too. It does, and those brakes do work pretty good. Now, as this far as drums go, they're the best. Yeah. This would have been high-speed drum technology back in the day. Yeah. Tell me about this, too. One other thing I really like, one of my favorite things on any bike, on any custom bike, is when you can make the handlebars look absolutely perfectly clean. And usually you accomplish that with a foot clutch and an internal throttle, but you have front brakes on this. I have front brakes. And you have and a regular, and a hand clutch, but we still have completely, yeah, perfectly clean cook, handlebars. Uh, cook Customs controls that were modified, usually these are like sweeping and they're a little, little more for, you know, most bikes, but for this bike, they actually made them this shape for me. But that's who made the internal throttle and clutch and brake so that's, that's I beautiful. I mean, it's a pain in the ass to put in, but they I bet. The so, worth worth every step because, again, it's all about the stuff that you don't see, the stuff that you don't notice, and you go, why does this motorcycle look so much better? Or why is this motorcycle so much better than so many other bikes I see? And it's because of tiny little touches like that that you don't see at first blush. This is the stuff you don't notice. You know, stuff you don't notice. Other stuff you might not notice is where's the battery? And that's because something that was never... Oh, there we go. <laughs> and so that's not even a battery, that's just a capacitor, just a right? Capacitor. That's all it is. Just to hold the lights and then the oil goes in there also. So the capacitor and the oil down oil. there. And then something that was never made for this bike 
is this giant hunk of metal that some people might not know what it is hanging off the side of the sucker right here. It's a six, six cylinder aircraft magneto off of like a continental engine from around the 50s. So this is an original 1950s aircraft magneto. So I would have run, an, I was on an airplane running. Yep. That's fucking wild. And you made that whole piece coming off there to yeah, be able to accept belt, that. Yeah, there's a belt drive going up in, up, up to their timing belt, you know, so that everything's per done perfectly. And then that, and again, when you guys hear the riding video, you'll hear a bunch of crackles and pop and the microphone that's in Eric's helmets, because magnetos and microphones don't get along very well. I found out, yeah, causes mad interference. Yeah, yeah. yeah. stainless custom oh, yeah, the, that we made, all three come out of the one. That's freaking insane. Yeah, that's, when you want to think about expansion chambers, it's like, how the fuck did you fit three expansion chambers underneath there? If you guys didn't know, and it'd be hard to know just looking at them, no offense, Eric is actually a brilliant engineer as well, so <laughs> it does take it does take a whole lot of engineering, probably cursing and, and giving up and trying again to make three giant expansion chambers fit underneath this motorcycle that were all made by hand, right? Yeah, we, we drew them all, we drew them all up in 3D CAD, and then laser cut all the pieces flat, and then hand rolled them and fit them together. So each each one is like I think 17 pieces that's rolled Jeez. and welded and fit. So yeah, it's a okay. big. Did you polish that engine? Uh, I didn't polish it, but I had. I was about to say I tried I tried polishing. And if you look, it's not all easy. the way down into you know the cylinder is polished. So that is, that's the real like deal right there, all the, all the, the way in. Way. I don't know how well that's showing up on camera. Yeah. This is going to be one of those ones you're going to have to catch Eric at a show because uh, the engine, the, the I feel like we're doing the bike justice, but the polish job on the engine, there's no way I'm doing that justice with this camera. As somebody who's tried to polish things before, I will tell you, whoever did that is a fucking master. And holy shit, I mean, this you ride this bike. That's the whole thing. That's why I like doing these things, these videos with Eric, because this bike gets ridden. If you're following Eric on Instagram, and you should, or FNA Custom Cycles, I'll have a link in the description, you would see that he was out on a ride with these bikes just the other day. In fact, we were supposed to do a video on this bike earlier, but Eric freaking blew it up and just blew up one of the expansion chambers and had to rebuild it because he rides this motherfucker all the time. And that, again, that's the point of this series is, would you ride it? And you cannot say, you can't look at this wild, crazy, custom, insane motorcycle and go, oh yeah, that's cool, but nobody would ever ride this. This motorcycle gets ridden on a regular basis. This, mo this is a regular ridden motorcycle. And believe it or not, we're about to prove it because we're going to go out on a ride, me on my super dorky dad jeans Ducati and Eric on the, Eric on the Widowmaker. You know what it reminds me of? The Munsters dragster. I don't know why, like, you know, the, the dragster they had in the Munsters with the big yeah. fucking rear wheels and everything like that? It's a digger style, so this is actually like yeah, a so it modeled after a da drag, drag bike, right? Drag bike chopper, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, but... Let's start to there it is, man.
It's crazy to see somebody actually sitting on it because it just looks like something that, when you look at it, it looks like something that would never be ridden. But you're about to see it. I just, it's so hard to imagine it actually moving down the road just sitting still. <laughs> oh man. You guys who know me know that I am an enormous two-stroke fan. Holy shit, this thing's fucking moving. Dang. Holy crap. I gotta actually... <laughs> Holy crap, I gotta... Whoa! <laughs> Holy shit, I gotta fucking haul ass to keep up with this thing. <laughs> I'm about to not get any third person of this thing moving. I'm trying to talk about the bike and how crazy it looks to see it moving, but uh, now I'm just trying to keep up with it. Widowmaker is right. This bike is on a whole other level. I would stand this. I, I would say right now, there are probably not a whole lot of choppers out there that are making this type of power. As Eric drives it down a brick road, not exactly the most smooth ride. <laughs> but you know, looking cool comes with a price. That just shows you that these bikes aren't afraid to get ridden. Here's this hard hardtail, one-of-a-kind chopper, absolutely wild. And he's like, yeah, I'll take it down a brick road. No big fucking deal. Holy crap. I wasn't even looking at my acceleration, but I gotta tell you guys right now, that thing is fucking fast. Holy mackerel. I will tell you, I would have ridden the Glam Ferry. I was all about riding the Glam Ferry. This bike is on a whole nother level of balls it takes to get out on this thing and twist that throttle wide open. You're talking about a hard-tailed death machine straight out of somebody's fucking nightmare. This thing looks like it's out of a Rob Zombie video. This is Dragula. Some sort of 70s werewolf on wheels gothic nightmare. Ah, oh, we'll go. Holy crap, I was like, we'll go for the scenic shots now. And then Eric's like, eh, I think I'll haul ass instead. Holy mackerel, there ain't, a, there ain't a whole lot of sounds that sound like a two-stroke triple, boys. I'll tell you that right now. I know a lot of you guys were saying Eric needs a back seat just to carry his balls around after watching him ride the glam ferry. What do you think of this motherfucker now? <laughs> so you tell me, would you ride this thing around? You got enough balls to twist the throttle wide open on a hard tail three cylinder 750 cc two stroke chopper because let me tell you as i'm doing wheelies to keep up with them jesus eric
Wow. <laughs> I had to go way wide open to actually pull in front of them right there. And this is a 150 horsepower Ducati. <laughs> that thing is not just fast. It's not just fast for a chopper. This bike is legitimately fast. This ain't no freaking, this ain't no iron head. Oh wow, here he goes again. This ain't no iron head or shovel head cut down the road. This thing is the definition of hell on wheels. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I wasn't expecting him to go so fucking ham. Jesus Christ, you could have warned me, Eric. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, we'll putt around a little bit, get some cool shots of it. And then just like, boom, wide open throttle. See you later. My God, dude, I, I you can't see it because I got the GoPro on, but I am ear to ear right now. <laughs> wow, that is fucking cool. All right, guys, make sure and go follow Eric FNA Custom Cycles on Instagram. Show him some love. Tell him Shade Tree Surgeon sent you and ask him what kind of backpack he has to carry around his giant brass balls.